This is sixth grade history, and we are going to be looking at lesson 132, pages 252 to 255 in your book. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and look at this. We um, Briefly, I'm gonna review some of the things that we talked about last time. The, um, the proper role of government is one of those things. And so our founding fathers believed that the role of government was to do what? Um, for our lives and private property of the individuals and families, what was it supposed to do? It was to protect the life and private property of the individual and families. But by the 1960s, some politicians were saying that the government should do what for us? Provide food, shelter, other goods for large numbers of people. And if people are given all of these things, what is the tendency of those people? Is it to work harder or is it to get lazy? Now it would be to get lazy. And so there's many things that that, that may help, many situations that that could help. But for the majority of the people, they need to work and they need to be um, held accountable for their actions and not just given a handout. Um, Dwight Eisenhower was the, the president that we looked at um, last, and, and there were a few things that he did in his presidency. Um, he strengthened our military alliance with what organization? It was the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, also known as NATO. And it was an alliance between Western European countries and Canada and the US that was against communism. And so the, the strength and success of NATO played a major role in the eventual collapse of the communist government and the, and the Soviet Union because they were, there were these countries banded together against communism and, and fighting for this, the rights of the people in the countries that were held by the communism. Some of the things that he did in our country, um, what was developed that helped travel um, become more, more accessible and um, people going on vacations and such, what was that that was developed? That was our interstate highway system um, that was developed. And then there was something that helped with the ocean shipping from the Great Lakes, what was that? The St. Lawrence Seaway. Um, and then uh, the other thing that he was most known for is the space age, um, his establishment of NASA and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration starting in 1958 and bringing us into the space race really with Russia and um, some other countries too, but giving us those, the first Americans fly in space, who was Alan B. Shepard Jr. in 1961. And then who was the first American to orbit the earth? That was John Glenn. And what did Neil Armstrong do in 1969? The first American to set foot on the moon, okay? And so the next president that we're looking at is John F. Kennedy. And John F. Kennedy was known as a liberal. We're going to look at the difference between a liberal and a conservative. And I just want to read what is said about the liberal. He was part of the Democratic Party. Um, and um, you can be Democrat or Republican and be liberal because of the definition, or you could be conservative for either. Hey, a liberal in modern America is a person who endeavors to break away from traditional beliefs and values. Because liberals often seek freedom from personal responsibility, they believe that it is the government's responsibility to provide for people's everyday needs. And so that is, that's, um, that's the government saying that um, they should provide all of these basic things for people and that they don't have um, the, the people don't have the responsibility to work and to, to earn a living. And um, 
they, they break away from the traditional um, beliefs and values. And so uh, it can be very, very dangerous for that. Um, a conservative wants to preserve pr traditional beliefs and values. Conservatives believe that the main function of government should be to protect the nation from invaders and that people should be free to handle their own everyday responsibilities. American conservatives want to preserve the nation's heritage of freedom and responsibility by upholding the Constitution's original meaning and pr promoting traditional values. And really, a conservative goes back to the original meaning of the Constitution and, and what our forefathers, those that set up the, the government and, our, and everything, were really desiring to do for our nation. Um, you know, they wanted this freedom but they didn't want people to just um, rely on the government to provide things for them. Um, and we look at, at, if we remember all the way back to those, the pilgrims off the Mayflower, they had the rule, if they don't work, then they shouldn't eat. And, you know, that, that principle is carried through to now. Um, but John F. Kennedy was considered... Um, a, a liberal, and he was, he developed um, a system, a welfare system that um, expanded greatly under this. It was, um, he was trying to provide the needs for people um, without them really working for it. But the New Frontier was his idea, his social reform, his program that he he was bringing them out. And in, during 1962 and 1963, during this time, it was, was when the Supreme Court ruled that prayer and Bible reading should not be allowed in public schools and it was unconstitutional. Um, that's what the Supreme Court does. It says whether something is constitutional or not constitutional. And so if it's not constitutional, then they remove it from wherever they've, um, wherever it was. But if it is constitutional, then, then it stands like that. Um, but another decision that was made, and then this one is on the board, Roe versus Wade, and many others like that, they were um, many court cases that were about abortion. And so then in this time, um, in a few years after the, the prayers, 1973 was the Roe versus Wade. So in the 1970s, um, it legalized abortion, and that's the killing of unborn babies. And, you know, that's such a sad thing. And I understand that sometimes there are, there are circumstances that um, it would be unsafe for the mother, um, but this is really something that our that people, <laughs> this, is, this goes back to taking responsibility. Um, and, and if you're not going to take responsibility for your actions, then things like this can happen. And, and so that's really sad to see. And um, it's, the Bible does talk about um, the, you know, the, the unborn baby is really, a, a, it is a person and, and it really is a human from, from the point that it's conceived and, and it is not just tissue. Um, it is really a, a true person. And the Bible talks against murder. And that, that really is considered murder. Um, but the, the next thing that, that we look at is Cuba. Um, and there are a couple things that happened in Cuba. There was um, the communists had taken over and the American, um, there were, Cubans that came to America for refuge in American, the, um, the armed forces trained some of those, um, they were called freedom fighters, the Cuban freedom fighters, and they were going to go back and they were going to take back their country and they were promised air support, um, meaning planes that would, that would um, go over and, and make sure that they, and provide cover and support so that they could invade and, and take back their country. But something happened and no air support was given from America. And so 
that invasion was was stopped and and many of those um, Cuban freedom fighters were killed in this and the Soviet Union um, had of course was was communist and they they were sending support and they were sending um, nuclear weapons and missiles to to Cuba and um, the Americans were trying to stop that and the Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev was wasn't going to back down at first and the Cuban Missile Crisis was um, really what we were at the brink of a nuclear war at this point with that and so the United States had um, remained firm. President Kennedy was was adamant that, that they were not going to attack. Um, they were not going to give up and, and they weren't going to allow them to attack. So they set up a blockade to block them from the Soviet Union from bringing in the missiles. And so the Cuban Missile Crisis was avoided um, because um, they, they came to an agreement. But unfortunately, that agreement meant that President Kennedy promised that no American president would ever invade Cuba and overthrow the communist government from Cuba. Um, and so I'm not sure if that was such a, a wise compromise, but it did end that, the missile crisis. Um, and then in 1963, President Kennedy was assassinated. He was shot in his motorcade in, while well, he was in Dallas, Texas, and he, um, he died, and then Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson did become the next president. Um, he had some ideas for his social reform program, and it was called the Great Society. And the Great Society would uh, mean that they taxed private individuals and businesses and gave the money to local and state governments, and then the local governments became dependent on these financial handouts. And so that that was sending money for schools, for food, for housing, medical care, um, sent to the, the government, like to the state of Washington or, or whichever state it was, instead of to people or um, local communities or private charities. Then the people became dependent on those social programs because they could just go and they could get a handout for what they needed. And so, you know, that was the beginning um, that there were heavy taxes on the businesses, which brought down the, there, they weren't as competitive in their products. They didn't have as much money to put into new inventions and, and research. And then South Vietnam was um, under, the the communists that were in North Vietnam were sat fight, fighting South Vietnam, and they President Johnson wanted to go in and um, to defeat the the communists in South Vietnam and and push them back to North Vietnam and and even go further and 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 go attack North Vietnam. But Congress said that that he wasn't allowed to do that, and they were able to fight to to defend the freedom of South Vietnam but they weren't really able to win this war they were able to only push them back kind of like we did in from South Korea to North Korea um, and so the Vietnam War was was a um, many of the, the veterans that came back from this war when they came back, the American people did not see them as heroes, and it was really sad um, how they were viewed, um, even though it wasn't their fault. It was, it was the government's fault on um, why they couldn't um, fight to win, and communist was not going to be defeated at this time. And so um, the next president, Richard N. Nixon, he abandoned um, his initial ideas was to defeat communism in South Vietnam, but he had some loyalties, um, the, the pressure from Congress, and he had a desire to befriend communist China um, to try to have 
some peace among the nations. And so he pulled all of American troops out of South Vietnam and left those people to really fend for themselves. Um, and then he had some, some a, a downfall. He had some members of his cabinet that were trying to uh, break into the Democrat National Headquarters. And um, then he tried to cover that up. And it was, it was found out. And it's known as the Watergate Affair because um, it was done, the building was in the Watergate complex. And President Nixon is the only, the first and the only president to ever resign from office. And that was because they were going to impeach him. And so he decided he would resign. Gerald R. Ford took over after that. Um, in 1975, communists took over all of Vietnam. And so all of our, our efforts in Vietnam were, um, were destroyed at that point. Um, and then, you know, communists are not content to, to be where they are. They then invaded Cambodia and Laos and took control of those countries and, and, and killed many people because of it. They, they were not um, kind at all. Um, and President Carter would be, is the last president that we're looking at, Jimmy Carter. And, you know, he had, he also was trying um, to please people in, in some ways. And, and I think in a position like that, it is hard not to try to please people. And he followed the desire of the United Nations and he signed a treaty um, to hand over the Panama Canal back to Panama in 1999 at the very end. And so then it started some um, assumptions from the communists. They, they believed that we were a weak nation and that we weren't going to protect um, Central America for communism. And so they increased their terrorism in El Salvador and um, in Nicaragua. And um, then some in over in Iran, there was a, a group, an organization that was anti-communist, it was the Shah of Iran, and that was overthrown. And in the process of that, 55 Americans from the American embassy, where they were supposed to be safe, were kidnapped, and America did not do what it was supposed to do. The, the president did not take decisive action and did not um, secure the release of those American hostages. And, and it's really sad, but that, that is what happened. It, was, it became a, a historic low in our ability to defend our own freedom. And so um, they, the Soviet Union even at this point invades Afghanistan. Um, and then the, there's, we end on a high point and that is between Egypt and Israel. President Carter was able to um, help a peace treaty between Israel and Egypt. And this is really the first time in 2000 years that the Jews and Arabs have officially talked together peacefully. Um, and they, they call it the Camp David Peace Accords. He got the leader of, of Egypt, Anwar Sadat, Anwar El Sadat, and Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin. Um, and they agreed to a peace treaty. And, you know, the peace treaties only last as long as people do not fight, but it was what they um, were able to accomplish at that moment of time. And, Go ahead and read pages 252 to 255, and um, you can answer the comprehension check on a piece of paper, and we'll see you next time.